This video on inquiry-based teaching is part of the Clinical Educator Series. Asking questions makes for some awesome teaching, but to be truly awesome, we need to make sure our questions are effective. What questions we ask is important. How we ask them is essential to good teaching. Physician participants in a U of A College of Medicine study on inquiry-based teaching indicated that inquiry teaching should stimulate academic thought, offer learners a lifeline, enable instructors to assess knowledge and adjust teaching, and encourage excellent patient care. One physician participant in the study defined good inquiry teaching as asking clinically relevant questions, usually of increasing difficulty, to test the trainee's knowledge base as well as their limits to help guide teaching to the appropriate level of knowledge and to help guide their studies. So let's talk about how we formulate effective questions. We can think of this as a three-step process. The first is to ask ourselves, why do I want to ask this question? Then we need to determine what kind of thinking do we want to stimulate on the part of the learner, and that will help us select the type of question that will suit these needs. If I'm going to lay foundation or assess basic knowledge, I'm going to target my student's recall or comprehension of medical knowledge relevant to the patient I would like them to see. But if I want to take a deep dive into the topic, I'll skip over questions aimed at basic recall or comprehension and ask questions that promote conceptual, procedural, or metacognitive thinking. The literature on inquiry-based teaching describes a wide variety of question types. Yes, no, or short answer questions are aimed at what the student recalls. Explanation questions are aimed at what the student understands. What if compound or circumstantial questions are aimed to take the student on a deeper kind of dive? Let's say we're working with the student for the first time. We want to know whether they have knowledge relevant to the patient's case. If they recall or comprehend, for example, what the criteria are for determining the suspected condition. In a sepsis case, we would say, what are the criteria for determining sepsis? If we want to take our student on a deeper dive, such as in helping to develop a plan of care, we want them to engage in higher order thinking. For this, we might ask a what if question. For example, we could ask, what if our patient had a history of myocardial infarction or orthostatic low blood pressure? How would we approach treatment differently than a patient without that history? Asking how, why, and what if promote critical thinking and reflection. 